Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I want to teach you how to get better at Call of Duty by unlearning your bad habits. For a long time I was stuck at the exact same skill level in Call of Duty. I was doing the same things over and over again. I had the same KDR, I had the same ability to aim, and my performance never really changed until I accidentally tried something new that forced me to unlearn my bad habits, and I'm pretty sure that in the last few months it's made me much better at Call of Duty. You as a third person observer can judge my gameplay and my streams and what I've been posting I feel like I've been playing a lot better it certainly feels easier for me I feel like I'm killing people more effectively uh, you can tell me what you think but I'm pretty confident that I have gotten better at Call of Duty I feel like an anime character that's been pushed past his limits and has been forced to level up and the secret really was just unlearning my bad habits that were holding me back hence the return of the Jedi reference in the title where Yoda says you must unlearn what you have learned which is exactly what I did. So today I'm gonna talk about exactly what I did to unlearn these habits and my specific habits and struggles that I unlearned. PC gaming in the last couple of months has stolen my heart. You've probably noticed that, but with no new Call of Duty that I like to hold me down since I've been skipping Infinite Warfare, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch, a lot of Battlefield 1, a lot of PUBG, even CSGO and Secret, and when I do play Call of Duty, I've been juggling Advanced Warfare, a little bit of Infinite Warfare earlier this year, Modern Warfare Remastered, Black Ops 3, and Black Ops 2, so every single COD game I play is also fairly different from each other, but the PC gaming is really Really what did it. I wasn't totally new on PC. I had done PC gaming some years in the past, but ever since Call of Duty had taken my heart, I just kind of been playing that game on console. But when I went back to PC gaming this past spring and winter, I was very, very far behind mechanically and mindset wise. I assumed that my Call of Duty console skills would carry over and they really didn't. I spent more than a few months getting completely wiped off the map, but I did eventually catch back up. Now you might be thinking, oh lord, here comes the lesson her to her pc is better than console i'm a pc master race now get good kids aim with the mouse nope that is not it at all they are fundamentally different platforms and in order to play on the other platform i had to disregard what i knew about playing console and learn a whole new bag of tricks because the tricks that worked well on console that i brought over didn't necessarily help me and so for console games i had my own internal set of rules goals and strategies that i always use and for better or for worse, those things were holding me back. So playing on PC, I had to abandon that, learn new rules, and then when I came back to playing Call of Duty after playing PC, I was kind of mixing and matching my internal rule set, and I learned that I was just doing some things wrong in Call of Duty. So now I want to talk about the things that I've changed and why I have changed them. Previously, I used to never go for headshots in Call of Duty games. I used to think that aiming on console was too hard, or more specifically, that headshots just aren't worth it. They're supposed to be high risk, high reward, and that it was just always better to shoot people in the body. Why go for the faster headshot kill? We can just pop people in the body a few times. Not even worth it. Uh, however, lately I've been going for headshots and I've noticed that especially for people that are standing still or not moving a whole lot, as you know, they're not bouncing around in one of the bouncier games, I absolutely will go for headshots to try and kill them much quicker, even in one-on-one -on -one engagements. And in my experience, it's very much so been worth it. It's been dropping people much faster and you'll say, well, yeah, obviously headshots are better. Well, not necessarily, obviously. Not even pro gamers go for headshots, and it's a personal strategy because it is a little bit harder to aim on console, but the headshot thing has been working for me. And a corollary to this, I've been going for harder shots. And previously, it was sort of a commentator dilemma is that I didn't want to be seen missing because when you miss, you have bad aim and you're bad and your audience doesn't like that. But if people are going to position in a way where I can shoot them with impunity, then why not pop off a few shots? Even if it's long range, even if they're running around and you probably won't hit them, if you can pop off a couple of rounds and then, you know, you'll show up on radar, you can reposition easily with no other enemies nearby. There's no reason not to. Like, even still, I'm not going to hit a lot of those shots, right? But I might hit one out of four, one out of five, it'll net me another kill, and there's no real loss to me, and I don't really care if I look bad doing it anymore. So that has helped me tremendously. Positioning has been a big change. So my previous strategy for Call of Duty, and some of it had to do with the fact that I was going for a certain style of gameplay for commentaries, was that I used to just do quick draw cowboy gunfights. I like to pop up in people's face and sort of challenge them to these one-on-one -on -one gunfights to just shoot them right in the face as much as possible to see who has the better aim, the better guns, the better everything and 
it was a strategy that worked because I felt that I had better reaction time than most and because it looked cool. But in reality, that's not a smart thing to do. I mean, uh, shooting people in the back 100% of the time and being 100% flanking is a little bit boring, and you can lose some of your skill in gunfights by not doing that, but I don't necessarily go for that kind of positioning anymore. I go for a little bit more flanks, and I do it now more for picks. I'm just trying to get picks on people. I'm trying to shoot from super behind cover, head glitches, whatever. I don't really care as long as they're dying, and that's something I had to learn more in PUBG and Overwatch, is that I just have to make people die. I can't be flashy about it. It. I can't challenge them to fair fights. If the fights if the fight's fair, I could easily lose on PC because mechanically I'm behind. So I just kind of have to punish them for their bad positioning so I got a position better than them. A corollary to this is I've been trying to be a little bit more patient. I've been trying to slow my roll down and let people come to me because that's not necessarily a bad decision. Again, I dislike campers in Call of Duty. It wasn't flashy gameplay. It wasn't fun gameplay all the time. So I was rushing all the time. I was just running balls to the wall deep in the enemy spawn, jumping, shooting, doing all sorts of crazy stuff because I wanted to get that cool shot for a commentary but it makes for terrible gameplay because nine times out of ten I get shot and it doesn't do anything so I just kind of don't do that anymore I've slowed my roll down and combined that with the better positioning I'm mostly just trying to pick people off another fun one for me has been threat prioritization or and I don't mean that by which enemy to shoot first I mean how threatening my enemies are my assumption always used to be that nobody could aim particularly well or at least the average player in my average lobbies didn't have the best aim so as long as long as I was moving fast, as long as I was high mobility, as long as I was wall running, it made me impossible if not difficult to hit. And you can especially see this during Black Ops 3 and AW. I was bouncing all over the place, bad out of position. And of course this ties back into positioning, but after playing on PC for a bit where literally everybody can aim like they have auto aim with their mouse laser headshot death machines, I have decided to kind of not do that anymore or at least not assume that nobody can aim. My assumption now is that every single person is a threat, every single person can aim well, every single person can headshot you, so every person needs to be dropped immediately and I need to show no weaknesses whatsoever. Another one that's been different for me, and this is the last one before I change topics again, is is sound whoring. Now, I've been sponsored by Astro Gaming forever, so I've got all the best headsets. Shameless sponsorship moment. Check out the Astro A10s down in the description. But I didn't use them to their full potential because I have sensitive ears. I just do. Loud noises, uh, especially in headsets or things like that, are painful to me. And I don't mean painful in that they're annoying or painful that they're uncomfortable. I mean actually, like, physically painful in my ears when they're very loud. So while I do get very high quality audio out of the Astros, compared to how most people use them, my volume is still relatively quiet, so I'm not really able to sound whore with them. However, uh, the two games I've been playing most on PC, being Overwatch and uh, PUBG, require sound whoring as a game mechanic. The Overwatch characters are very loud, the footsteps are loud, there's ultimate callouts, there's a lot of in-game battle chatter. PUBG is all about hearing footsteps and doing directional tracking on gunshots and stuff like that. So in order to play these games, like, period, I had to find settings in my Astros, uh, equalizer settings, noise settings, so that I could make some of these lows a little bit louder, but not so loud that they hurt my ears. And I ended up adjusting the volume upward, and it still hurts my ears a little bit. It's, it's going to be difficult to get used to, but I'm becoming dependent on it. It feels like an extra sense that I've been totally neglecting for a very long period of time because of my personal level of discomfort. However, now I would keep that discomfort and not go without it because I hear a lot of people stamping around in Call of Duty. I hear them reloading. I hear them popping off shots. And it feels like having an additional radar to me. So that is a very good feeling. It's nice to be able to stop for a second and hear people stamp around, know where they're at, rush around the corner and kill them. So I would recommend sound whoring. And overall, in Call of Duty, I feel feel more now like instead of rushing in guns a-blazing like a John Woo film, I feel more like I'm hunting. It, it feels like the difference between going from like a Hong Kong action movie where you're going to slide in on your knees shooting dual pistols while glass and doves fall from the ceiling into more like you're a tactical operator like Jason Bourne. You're going to shoot somebody in the head and then leave the area. And it's helped me tremendously. Unlearning some of these bad habits and picking up new habits and new skills, new tools in my bag has made me a much better Call of Duty player. And these are my bad habits. These might 
not necessarily be the same as your bad habits or really anybody's. However, my suggestion for you on how to overcome them is to play some very different types of games and then come back to Call of Duty and see what you've learned. And it doesn't necessarily have to be PC for console, that's just what it was for me. There's lots of other console games that incorporate the same sort of uh, mechanics and difficulties that I encountered that you can play on your own, or even fighting games, or just all sorts of different things that you could do, even real life like paintball, airsoft, something like that. There are so many different games to play that you can learn new lessons from and then apply them to Call of Duty and see how well they fit. But my recommendation is if you're going to play them, don't just play them a little bit. Put some time in. An afternoon isn't going to do it. Do it a week or two. And it will really help reset your brain and recenter how you think about things and engagements. And I think it's just fun in general. Cross training in any sort of discipline, it, from physical fitness to engineering, is always useful. So for me, that is how I unlearned my bad habits to get better at Call of Duty. I hope this helped you guys learn something. If it did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.